My army wool blanket, will it keep me warm when wet? So for a little while now I've been running tests on different blanket types to work out what the best choice is for wild camping, bushcraft, etc. Now there's a few different factors at play here. Um, if we're thinking about pure versatility, fire resistance, etc. We've seen that the wool will beat the synthetic, but my tests did show that pound for pound the synthetics were outperforming a basic army wool blanket for pure insulation. However, of course, not all blankets or even woolen or natural fiber blankets are created equally. When I run my tests with alpaca, for instance, this blew both the conventional wool and the synthetics weight for weight out of the water, being both lighter and warmer for the weight. And of course, I haven't tested the whole array of other types of wool blanket available. Now, of course, the knit and all the weave will make a huge difference to this. What we really want is maximum air trapped or loft. Um, but we also have to consider things like robustness. We also have to consider things like uh, fire resistance, etc. as well. However, today's video, I'm not going to worry about the alpaca today, is a response to some questions I've had, which is how effectively will the wool blanket keep me warm when wet? Okay, so giving the blanket a good soaking or enough of the blanket for the test to soak through a good ring out to get the excess moisture out it's still nice and damp so we're all set up with our usual test setup wet wool no insulation, drywall, each cup filled with 200 millilitres of hot water. And we'll come back and check, test how much temperature and heat loss has occurred in a while. Before we jump to the results today, a tiny bit of quite important science. Wool has a couple of tricks up its sleeve. Firstly, as it absorbs water deep into the fibres, and it can absorb up to 30% of its weight in water, it can produce energy through the breakdown of hydrogen bonds. Now, some experiments on merino wool have shown over eight hours a kilo of wool generating as much energy as an electric blanket. Secondly, the crimped fibre structure of the wool can still maintain trapped air, which is a strong insulator. So we've got a bit of an insulation battle royale on our hands. In the red corner, we have these excellent properties of wool trying to generate or maintain heat. In the blue corner, we have the enhanced speed of heat loss through the evaporation of the water on the wool's surface. So on to the results. So to some disappointment on my side, and I really wasn't expecting this, across the test, the wet wool wrapped cup did lose an average of 4% more heat energy than the uninsulated cup. Now, cue sad face. As before, the dry army wool blanket maintained over 20% more heat. There is, however, a big but. There's a real emphasis on getting the blanket dry. Over time, as the blanket dries, there will become a point where it becomes a better insulator than no blanket. So if the blanket, if you're using the blanket whilst exercising, etc., can achieve dryness quicker, it's the way forward. We generate heat consistently as we metabolize and exist, and that heat can help the blanket dry more quickly. So what conclusions can we take from this then? If you're out in the wilderness and you fall in a river, everything's soaked and the only thing you have to keep you dry is your wool blanket, what should you do? Well, as we've seen, the quality of dry wool in keeping you warm is, is, is very good. So the emphasis really should be on drying your blanket out as quickly as possible. Now, again, you may not have fire available, etc. So your option may be to wear the blanket or not. And if you can exercise or do some activity that's going to dry it more quickly, this would seem to be the best advice. Another thing to consider is whether... To help dry the blanket out, you could use it as something like a, a wind shelter. Again, keeping the wind off you could help keep you warmer without you personally suffering the evaporative cooling effects of, of the wet wool, whilst helping it dry more quickly. But on the basis of this test alone, if you had something like a immobile casualty, 
who couldn't be moved and all you had to keep them warm was a wet wool blanket it does seem like it wouldn't be the go way to go with this this specific type of wool blanket as i say other types with maybe a looser weave or better insulative properties may give a slightly different result thanks for watching do like or subscribe if you enjoyed today's video or found it interesting and please do let me know in the comments if you've got any other thoughts or requests for tests